Good morning. Thank you for waiting, everybody. I'm Sarah with the State Library, and you are tuning in to Get on the Bus Reader's Advisory. And this is now our uh, third uh, session of genre exploration. Today, we're going to hear from two staff members from the Riverton Branch Library of Fremont County Public Library. Uh, first will be Joey Fowler talking about paranormal fiction, and then we'll have Sherry Haskins talking about the teen fourth dimension, great teen reads in the adult section and other good teen reads. Um, just a few reminders before we get started. All of the webinars will be archived at getonthebuswyoming.wordpress.com and you can see on the right hand side of the page each of the titles of our webinars that we start at back at the end of April and we have the titles, a few titles of some that will be coming up this week and next week. The, um, each For the genre presentations that we started last week, since we've got two little presentations in each session, the recordings will be split up. So if you want to go back and review just one of the subjects, you can uh, just listen to that portion instead of listening to the whole video. Remember that each page will have uh, homework questions at the end of it. I'll just click on one of last week's and participation in by commenting on those questions will make you eligible for some prizes including $25 Amazon gift certificate and WLA registration uh, for the WLA conference here um, in Cheyenne this fall. I also just wanted to uh, remind folks again, uh, I mentioned this at the very beginning of the program uh, last month, that the program came out of uh, an interest in having a reader's advisory interest group with WLA. Uh, a few people had, had um, mentioned some interest at last year's conference, and then uh, we never really got it together, including myself, and so I thought it would this would be a nice way to get people thinking about Reader's Advisory. So if you've been interested in this program or there's been some topics that we didn't cover that you would have liked to have uh, learned about or, or shared your experiences, think about that as we, uh, as we come around to the, the new year in WLA this fall, and maybe we can uh, put something together and continue trainings like this throughout the year. Okay, with that, I don't think there's any other reminders that I have. With that, I am going to go ahead and hand it off to Joey Fowler in, in Riverton and give us just a moment for that. Okay, um, I'm talking about paranormal fiction um, and mainly because I, that's the genre that I read. And um, you'll see through the PowerPoint. Okay. You'll see that through the PowerPoint, I'm going to touch on all the points that are on the PowerPoint. I did some research on everything because I do research all the time for some reason. Um, but paranormal, I'm going to go ahead and define the actual genre. Um, paranormal is considered anything that's impossible to explain scientifically, and then everybody knows that fiction is an imaginative creation. So paranormal fiction is like pretty much impossible imaginations written down on paper. So um, what we're going to talk about is the stuff mostly that I read. Now the, the genre actually crosses over a bunch of other genres. It's a crossover genre. And it has some sub-genres. Horror is considered one of them. Uh, romance, there's urban fantasy, and teen. Everybody knows about the Twilight series. Uh, so these are some of the books, and these are some of the authors that I actually read. And most of the libraries I've noticed when we order books for other people that read in this genre, that a lot of libraries already have these series. So this may not be new to some of you. Um, and now I've lost my spot. Um, I would like to say that urban fantasy is getting to be more popular. And it's the same thing as paranormal fiction if you search it up. But like Patricia Briggs, she's had two different books. This one, Rivermark, and then the one before it were both on the bestseller list for the New York Times and stayed on there for quite a few weeks. And um, she considers her writing to be urban fantasy. So if you go to search, and the best place to search for new books for your collection is actually Amazon because there's so many people that are obsessed with it that there are lists everywhere. So, 
And I'm sure everybody knows that there has been a media blitz on paranormal lately. Everybody knows about True Blood, and that's Charlene Harris's series about Suki Stackhouse. And those books have been on the bestseller list. I believe she had eight of them on the bestseller list altogether. Um, Supernatural is on, I'm thinking TNT or Fox, but uh, it's into its sixth season. And it's extremely popular. There's people that are waiting for True Blood and Supernatural seasons to come out. Um, the mass merchandise, I thought I would bring this up because now the um, Monster High dolls are really popular. And if anybody has eight-year-olds, which I do, there are some action figures that look like Barbie dolls. And the dolls are extremely cool if you ever get a chance to look at them. But paranormal fictions crossed over into that too. And what these dolls are, they're monsters' children made into Barbie dolls. And they come in rag dolls and accessories and all kinds of stuff. Now, I'm not sure that there are any musicals yet, but chances are there is a vampire musical out there somewhere. Um, I did not find one because I wasn't really looking. Um, now, these are a few of the authors that I read. Uh, Carrie Vaughn. She's the author. She's got a new book called Steel coming out, and but she's got quite a few other books too. Uh, Discord's Apple is one of the ones that came out this year, and she's actually a crossover for adult and young adult. Um, Naked City is, if you look at these authors, Jim Butcher, Patricia Briggs, Melissa Marr, and Holly Black. I'm sure you've all heard of Holly Black. Um, she had the um, series about the fairies, and I can't think of Valiant. Valiant is one of her books. But these, this one right here, you can see from the picture, it's more urban fantasy, and it says that on there. But that's still paranormal fiction because you're dealing with monsters and supernatural things like fairies. And so, okay, and Katie McAllister, I know she's in a lot of libraries. Everybody has her, and she has about, I'm thinking, six different series, and some of them cross over. There's a dragon series, a vampire series that's called The Dark One. So she's a good author to have around because a lot of people read her. She's more light than, say, Laurel K. Hamilton is, uh, or even Charlene Harris. Charlene Harris is kind of, mm, she's got a little dark with Suki. Um, Cherry Author has two series out. She's got one about a werewolf woman, and um, then Laurel K. Hamilton. This is the 20th book in the Anita Blake series. And a lot of people have lost interest in the series because of the direction it took, but it has gone back into its beginning direction. So you might want to keep it in mind if you start her completely out. And then she also has a fairy series about Mary Gentry. And let me see. Um, I put these websites up because uh, they're pretty good websites for finding what you need if you're looking for new books. But honestly, I read so much, and I stay on Amazon, and if you search up any title you already have, or any author that you already have, um, you can find new books. And Amazon's good about putting that line of books under there that shows you what other books are like those books you've read. And I'm not saying all books they, they offer are good, and let me warn you that some of the authors, especially there's one I really like, uh, her name's Shelley Lawrenson. Some of the authors get really graphic, so you've got to check your books and your content to see what you've got going in there. Exactly like Laurel K. Hamilton, I know if anybody read her, read her series besides me, and when she went into where um, she had a lot of boyfriends, that's just being nice. But it got really graphic, and a lot of people didn't like it, um, so you've got to be aware of things like that. Because a lot of the young adults love to read these books. I know Charlene Harris ends up in young adult and in, um, in adult. And she's not quite as racy as Laurel K. Hamilton is. So she's a good one to have. And Patricia Briggs is definitely not as racy as either one of those. And she has really good books. And then there is a book, uh, there's a series, and you probably have the series. A lot of them have it. Um, it's the Fever series by Karen Marie Moaning. And the last one, Shadow Fever, stayed on the bestseller list for quite a while also. And then Kim Harrison has her series, the Hollow series, about a witch named Rachel. That one has had different of its series. And it's been, the last one's Pale Demon. It just came out. And it's been on the bestseller list for a while, too. So these are books that 
are getting out to the public and they're getting out to a larger base in the public. So it's worth having them around. And we used to kind of blow them off because of what they were about. Uh, it's not science fiction. It's completely different. And I thought that somebody has some science fiction in there that they're fixing to talk about. So science fiction is not the same thing as paranormal fiction. Science fiction is more about um, technology. Um, and then there's one more thing. I thought about some ideas of why I actually read these things. And um, one of my coworkers wanted me to bring in about paranormal fiction and the tendency to go to feminism right now. A lot of the heroines in it are, um, well, we'll say kick butt. That's not what they call them, but that's what we'll say. Um, there is a series out by Marjorie M. Lou, and it's the Hunter Kiss series. And the heroine has one boyfriend, I always throw it, and she's the one that saves everybody. She's the feminist. She's the one that does it. And a lot of these, the thing that is uh, attractive about these books, and these, uh, to the, I guess to the younger generation especially, is that the heroine, they do the work and they do the saving. A lot of times they have to go in and rescue the men. So that's a good thing. I mean, that's a good thing for the younger women. And I'm not saying that every one of them, I've read a few where the little girl that is the heroine is not very strong, but that just depends on what you want to offer to your patron or what they ask for. Um, and I actually had a whole list of ideas of why I read. And, okay, my thoughts on paranormal fiction. And I'm sorry if I'm kind of off on this. Um, I, I think that part of the draw is the romance with a creature that still appears human, but isn't human. Because with men and women, you run into things and I think a lot of females look at it as the man is, is better than an ordinary man. You're not disappointed. I think that's what it is. Uh, for example, in a lot of the stories, most men are extremely loyal and they only want the heroine. There's something in their supernatural makeup where they cannot cheat and they don't want anybody else. It doesn't matter what she looks like. So the heroine is usually in exciting situations <laughs> with beautiful people who are drawn to her despite her ordinariness. Um, there's usually a little special thing thrown into her makeup. She might smell good to the fairies or something. And um, she's uh, usually the monsters or mythical beings have a whole list of rules for their society. And if you read any of these series that do really good, there's just a whole list of rules that they can't break, but the heroine can, and she gets away with it. And the betrayal, any time that someone betrays somebody, it's better explained than if, you know, in, with humans, you get up in the morning, you're in a bad mood, you betray somebody. So it's a little different. Um, the heroine is allowed to vent her frustrations in these stories, and she's usually quite good at it. Most of these heroines, Sometimes it's supernaturally enhanced abilities, but usually they're trained with weapons and they're trained to fight, and it's just it's it's more of a a, a better role model for the younger women. Um, the heroine is usually the exception to the human rules. For instance, she accepts the monster as he is. Uh, so this is kind of like a Beauty and the Beast thing, and a lot of these stories have they have the mythological information and the legends and you learn about other cultures through these. You can learn a lot of information. A lot of people throw that off and say, oh, vampires, we don't want to read about vampires. But you learn a lot about cultures because some of the vampires sometimes say they're a thousand years old. You get some of the culture from a thousand years ago brought into the storyline. Or you get uh, educational information from characters who were alive 300 years ago. And so that is how a lot of people learn. I mean, not everybody is going to go to school, and a lot of people are avid readers, and they learn history through this. And I, I know that's kind of far-fetched, but um, let's see. The books are usually, they're about um, the battle between good and evil and the decisions that the heroine will have to make. Sometimes she has to change in order to make things better, and that's a good lesson, too, to learn. Um, I thought the I think the plus of these books, the good ones, the good series by the good authors, that is that, and I'm not talking about Twilight necessarily, um, is that mythology and folklore is being passed down through this new method of storytelling. 
The old tales are not lost since the majority of these authors do much research to make the mythical beings in question authentic. And that's what I said earlier about they learn history. Um, people are learning about history in other cultures even accidentally. Um, and we don't teach a lot of that sometimes. And I thought that by learning about other cultures and seeing the love and acceptance across species and racial and cultural dramas of real life are played out in these books a lot of times. It gives the people options in real life of how to, how to act. So, um, and there is another thing I wanted to bring up. Um, like Laura K. Hamilton, as, as far as education, if you read her book, especially the first ones and the ones lately, um, she gives us a lot of insight into police procedure and weapons. Um, she does a lot of um, research into her mythology. A lot of her books focus on different, like there's one called Obsidian Butterfly that talks about a Mayan goddess, and she's just a vampire. But you learn a lot about that religion. Um, Patricia Briggs, her werewolf series, and there's actually two of them. Um, there's the Mercy series and then the Alpha and Omega series. And the, the uh, characters in there are it's very different. And one of the uh, heroines in the Alpha and Omega series is not as upfront and aggressive as Mercy is in hers, but she ends up being a lot stronger and changing. And Patricia Briggs is good about taking a personality and playing the weaknesses and making it into a strength. And so that gives young adults and adults the idea that everything's not a weakness. With her, with Patricia Briggs, with her werewolves, as I mentioned earth, earlier, they come from a lot of other cultures and, and races. And then when they become werewolves, they learn a new culture. So they keep a lot of the old biases, and she has actually um, talked about that, like their uh, prejudice against different cultures, different, like uh, against gays and African Americans and things like that. So I, th I think it is educational. Um, most of the heroines are humans that are fighting huge odds or are mostly human or believe themselves to be human. And so that's, that's important because you don't really want your heroine to be a total fairy or a werewolf and then she's not, you can't relate to her. So you've got to have the humanity in there. Um, most of the heroines overcome great injustice or and grow into characters you can root for. Uh, the genre offers worlds you cannot visit and places you can only yearn for. The heroine usually finds out that we are all the same on the inside, another message that most of these books do have. Uh, the heroine usually has control over beings of great power or just over power, and secretly we all wish we had some power. So um, there's a lot of good books out there that are worth having in your collection that shouldn't be overlooked, and uh, a lot of movies too. So it's just another, to me, this is just another way of storytelling. And I think I've talked about everything. So I'm going to give up the floor. Great. Thank you so much, Joey. That was really informative. Um, I, I want to now just um, take a moment or two uh, before our next presentation to open it up to any questions or comments for those of you out there who uh, have um, a mic and would like to share your question with the group, you can go ahead and raise your hand. There's a little uh, hand uh, button there. Or if you don't have a mic or don't want to share your question with the group, you can go ahead and uh, uh, text it or type it rather into the chat box and I will share it. Um, while we're waiting for questions to come through, one comment that I, I want to make um, that I'm really enjoying about this uh, this part of our Reader's Advisory series where we're getting to listen um, to all sorts of library staff across the state. Last week we did have um, Richard uh, uh, in Campbell County talk about science fiction and, and he ended up um, kind of touching a little bit on fantasy, he did talk about paranormal fiction, he, fiction. he kind of covered a, a whole lot lot of genres and subgenres. And then we had Joey today talk specifically about paranormal romance or paranormal fiction rather and its elements. So um, and next week we'll have romance and mystery, which are these real broad topics. So I really like how we can um, have folks talk on a real broad uh, topic of these real overarching genres and then we can 
narrow it down and talk about these subgenres. So I just wanted to share that. I think that's a, a really fun feature of this series where we get to see how people, how different, um, how, how our colleagues across the state um, perceive these different uh, genres and how they read. So that was my only comment I wanted to throw in there. Uh, we'll just give folks a, a minute if they want to um, uh, ask a question. And it looks like we might have a few here. Bear with me. Okay, and so uh, Joey, I'm just going to go ahead and read the questions, and if you have a, a comment on them, please feel free to share. Um, okay. Let me see here. Bear with me. I just got to make sure I'm looking at them. Okay, so one, one question was, do you find that a lot of paranormal fiction has romance? Um, yes, a lot do, but I'm also finding that there's a lot of new authors out that there might be you're dealing with women so there's going to be a string of romance in there but a lot of them um, don't have so much anymore and um, there's one person they're having a relationship with and it seems more realistic than it used to be instead of the hero hero coming in and sweeping her off and carrying her off wherever so there's not quite as much romance in a lot of them as there used to be but i will admit because everybody's rich wildlife. There is a lot of romance in the genre. Great, thanks. So, um, and then another question was, um, would people who like Anne Rice books, like the Mayfair Witches series, enjoy some of these titles that you've mentioned today? Um, I think they would if, you would have to fill out your patron. I actually read Anne Rice and did start out reading The Vampire Lestat a long time ago when I was like 18 or 19. That's a long time ago. But um, there are some paranormal fiction, like um, I'm trying to, uh, Butcher, Jim Butcher, his series with the Wizard, uh, the Dresden series. That is a really good series. And a lot of people are turned off because it is uh, a wizard. But it, it's actually got a lot of, of mythology and stuff in there. And I think there are some vampire series out there that might appeal. You're just going to have to go through and check them out and check out reviews and stuff. Because there's so many out there now. Great. Thank you. Um, and I just seem to have lost my question screen. I think that was all the questions we had. Oh, there we go. Okay, great. Yeah, those were the only uh, questions that we had. So thank you again, uh, Joey. I'm going to go ahead and just take back the screen for just a moment, and um, we'll give uh, Sherry a chance to get ready. Okay, so again, um, Joey's presentation will be um, archived here under Paranormal Fiction. Um, also, in addition to the links that she talked about um, in her presentation, which are listed here, I think there's one other I needed to throw up, she also um, gave me a really extensive, uh, wonderful reading list, a lot of which she talked about in her presentation. So I will be including that here. I just didn't, I, I, I admittedly forgot about getting that ready for today. So we'll, we'll get that up when we get the video up as well.